Thank you, worship team. Precious presence this morning. Sweet spirit. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Grab a chair. Thank you. Thank you. secret there uh, just a song after service closing communion thank you Lord thank you Lord well hey I'm uh, Nate Schlegel and I'm uh, I'm the lead pastor here at Beyond Church it's honored to be in the house this morning actually we're gonna be wrapping up a, a message um, not a message but really just a, a series uh, that we've started uh, gosh eight weeks ago and it was just really about us understanding who God says he is. We've been talking about the names of God, the redemptive names of God, who Jesus or what what who Jesus is ultimately. You know, Jesus came to reveal the Father. That's what he came to reveal the Father and who and we've been looking at who the Father says he was and uh and a redemption in Jesus is all of these things. We've been talking about these seven redemptive names. But before we jump into that, I want to take a moment and um, a couple announcements and uh, take a, a moment to receive their tithes and offerings. Um, uh, for, if you have your Bibles this morning, and if you'll put on the screen, Matthew chapter 6, this is something that um, I, I did on Wednesday night. Actually, somebody else was going to be doing uh, offering this morning, uh, but it felt like it was important to not only uh, talk to our Wednesday night crowd, but to talk to Sunday morning on the same thing. So I got the privilege to to be doing this. You know, um, how many of you know sometimes there's those moments in your life, maybe it's with your kids, maybe it's with somebody in a conversation at work. Uh, I'll tell you, when you talk about more than the weather with some, with your friends, like you talk about the things of God, it's amazing what comes out. So I just encourage you, if, you, if you've been just only talking about the hogs, that's, you can just let that go by, guy, you know, and you can talk about something other than that. But seriously, if you engage and, and talk about, you know, the Word of God, it's amazing what comes out. Or you talk about your tomorrow and, and, and in light and underneath of what God says about your tomorrow. Anyway, um, and so I was uh, in a conversation with my, son, my oldest son uh, re- earlier this week. And um, how many of you know when you're uh, just graduating high school or you're about to graduate high school... Um, you, it seems like there's a lot of decisions. How many of you know it's not just when you hit 18, 19, 20, or 21? How many of you know when it's 40, you're 41, 42? You, there's still a lot of decisions, isn't there? And um, so we were, we were talking about uh, just what, what the days ahead hold, and he was working and uh, doing a job. And you know how you ever run into any kinks? You know, sometimes everything isn't just all roses. You just feel frustrated, you're giving it your best, and maybe the paint tips over, or you're giving it your best, and, you know, the washer goes out, you're giving it your best, you know, just like one of those things, it's like, God, and so you feel frustrated, and, um, and so it was in that time of conversation, uh, just feeling frustrated, and we were talking about doing, what, what you're doing with your life, and all of those kind of things, and, um, and, and I have to, I, I'm going to honor my, my oldest son. To me, for me, uh, he, he blesses me. All my kids bless me. But just, he's my first one that's making choices, right? Um, and ultimately saying, I want to do what God's wanting me to do. So that's just special to my heart. And he's putting his hand to things. He's putting his hand to business. He's working hard. He's up early and late and running business. So I'm, I'm just blessed by that. Just showing faithfulness, diligence. And so I just, that honors me. But even in that, there's, there's, there's wisdom and strength and counsel that comes. Um, because money likes to promise you things that it can't deliver. And so this is the context of the conversation. Um, as a young man, and I'm talking to all young men, young women, and older uh, males and females, everyone in the house. Money likes to promise you some stuff that it can't deliver. And so we were talking about 1 Corinthians 10, 31, which is whatever you do in word or deed, do it all for what? The glory of God. So you're not working, you're not doing what you're doing for yourself. You're not doing what you're doing for your family. You're doing it for the Lord. And this is important. Your why is more important than your what. And this is what we were talking about. Your why, 
Like, what am I supposed to do? What am I? What about tomorrow? What about this? Far, how far down the road? What about after I graduate college? What, you know, what am I supposed to? Whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. Your why is more important than your what. We were talking about that, and um, and, and ultimately this, not working for money, not working for money. And I wanted you to see this in Matthew chapter uh, six, at twenty four. It says, "No one can serve two masters." Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You can't serve both God and money. Uh, really, the word there is mammon, which means the spirit of money, that which would promise you, spirit meaning breath, that would promise you something. And it was funny, I was after this Wednesday night message, uh, I was talking at home uh, with the boys, and two of them were in here, and I, they said, one of them said, hey, you know, it's crazy, when you start talking about money, um, it gets crazy in the church, not just in the churches, even in the world, because he said, for some of us, it's like, you're talking about my master. He's like, it's kind of like, ooh, you're talking about my master. Don't be talking about my master. And so there, the, the, if, if, if when, when money is being talked about, it bothers you, that's a key that it's your master. So, so, so you could right now, like, if that's you, when, because i just talking about money right now, and it bothers you, you're serving the wrong Lord. I can, because it, it is even, we're, and we're not talking about, I'm not trying to raise dollars, I'm not trying to get you to give me something. I'm talking about, if it's kind of, why are you talking about money? Why are you talking about my master? You know, why are you talking about my master, bro? bro do, you, do you really need to be talking about my master? I thought we were here to talk about the Bible. Don't be talking about my master. But you can, here's the deal. Whatever one you come under, like if I come under the Lord, then that means I stand over mammon. If I come under mammon, that means I stand over the Lord. You'll see this in your life, in my life. This is what, and I think that some of us have, we, we, we've come under the Lord, but we've let mammon stay sideline like with us. Like we're together serving the Lord. No, no. Whatever I come under, the other one other comes under me. So it, it, I, I come under mammon, God, actually, that's what happens. I, I, no longer does he direct where, my life, money directs my life. The job directs my life. What I could go do, I, what I could go make directs my life. I'm telling you, so we just got to get these things back in order. And, and ultimately this, don't let money be your master. Because it is an evil taskmaster. It, it, it'll tell you things, it'll drive, it'll work you, it'll, it'll hurt you, it'll, you're, you'll, you'll miss the best moments of your kids' lives, all because it's saying you have to, you have to, you have to. And so just making this adjustment this morning of coming under the lordship of, of, of Jesus Christ, coming under his lordship and asking him and then commanding the other. This is what's super, super important, commanding the other. So when I come under the lordship of Jesus, mammon now comes under me, and I tell money what to do. And it's time that we tell money what to do, instead of it always talking to us. Because everyone here knows money likes to talk. It likes to tell you you can't, tell you you don't have enough, tell you blah, 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 or even say, if you could just get this, then you could have this joy, or you could have this peace, or you could have this fulfillment. That's a lie. I can have that because of what Christ has done. And so it's important that we recognize that. And I'm just going to pull out Hebrews chapter 1. This goes with this. Are not, um, are not angels ministering spirits sent to administer or serve the heirs of salvation? Like we have at our disposal, we have so much. But more than an angel, I don't know why it is. We, th we want to say, oh, an angel showed up. God showed up. The one who commands angels. And he showed up and he sent, made a way and he sent his son Jesus. And, and if he was willing to give you Jesus, will he not also freely give you all things? You have, and I have a good father. You know what we need more than anything else in the church? We need our prayers to be bolder. You have not because you, we talk about this all the time. You look, hey, do you want that chocolate chip? Have you ever been to somebody's house and, and you're hungry or you're thirsty and they got the Cokes out and they offer you one and, and you're like, nah, I'm good. And you really, you really want a Coke. Is, am I the only one that's ever done this? I, 
this has happened. I remember the first time I was with my, uh, my now my wife, being uh, at McDonald's. Her, her mom was driving, and I got to ride with them after basketball, and they went by McDonald's, uh, and I was super hungry. Now, I was like my middle boy, Samuel. He is uh, like fill the legs with food, right? And uh, she's like, hey, you want anything? And I'm like, no, I'm good, I'm good. Like, are you sure you don't want anything? And I'm just new to that, you know, like in their car. I'm like, uh, oh, best behavior. I'm like, are you sure you don't want anything? I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm good. I'm good. And then she's like, are you sure? I was like, okay, I'll just have a McChicken, a double cheeseburger, and a number one. <laughs> True story. We have to ask like that. We have a good father. And did you know, for the next six years, I had a lunch that my mom would pack me. I'd get a school lunch, and then she would pack me a lunch every single day. I ate three lunches my entire high school career. (laughs) And after school. And it all came because of asking. Hey, you think you could? I really like those Virginia ham sandwiches. Can can you? And she would bring in these Ranger bars. And listen. God loves you. And he didn't love you when you were good. He loved you and me when we were just filthy. And and even when we are filthy, or even if, if you've not been made, made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. In other words, when you are born again, the Bible doesn't say you become righteous. It says you're made it, 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 it's, it's, this, it's, it's the idea, and we're going to look at this this morning, that, that you emerge righteous. You emerge righteous. Like when you're born again, this is like the butterfly. Metamor- there's a metamorphosis that you emerge righteous. You don't come out of the cocoon and try to put wings on. You are righteous because of Jesus. Well, how much more? As the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. All of these promises. You're not, you're not going to become righteous. There's nothing you can do to make yourself righteous. It's what Jesus has done. And it's a free gift for you and me. So it's important that we recognize that we have a Father that wants to give us good things. And we start praying bolder prayers. And we start telling money what to do instead of it telling us what to do. Because we serve the Lord. Amen? Amen. 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 And so we're going to receive our tithes and offerings this morning, but I think it would be good um, for us just to stand up again this morning for a second and tell money something. I, I don't know what you got to tell it. You could tell it multiply. You're working for me. You could, what do you, I mean, ser- I'm serious. It's talking all the time to you and saying, I'm not going to be enough for this. If you'll work harder, then I'll be enough for that. No. So we're going to take a moment and we're going to command just the same way that the Lord direct commands us and gives us direction. We're going to speak to our finances uh, and come under. And even this, if the Lord tells you something, you're going to have to come under his word. This is what I'm talking about right now. I'm not just talking about pulling something out of thin air and like, okay, let's just start talking stuff. Okay? You can talk stuff if you want to talk stuff, but we believe, therefore we speak. So what I speak, I don't just pull things out of the air. Okay? I don't just pull things out of, you know, somebody else's pocket. No, I pull things out of my heart where the Lord speaks to me. This is we believe, therefore we speak. Why things don't often work is we're just... We're, we're not a name it, claim it, blab it, grab it group, but we are. You speak to the situation by faith. In other words, what the Lord speaks to your heart, will you yield to that and put it forth and bring it forth into this realm? The, the words that he spe- are speaking to hearts, they're, they're, they didn't originate out here. He's speaking right here, but he's looking to get them out here. And so if you'll yield to what you get here, it will Bring, you'll bring it about here because it, does, it didn't author you weren't the author of it and because you're not the author you're not the one that has to finish it so this is important okay so we're not just saying whatever we're saying you say and so you can have pastor say for you but that's a bunch of malarkey you can come under that word yeah but how about your word 
Philemon 1.6 tells us this. One chapter in this whole, ber- whole book, Philemon, he said, let, let, let the, uh, uh, your, your faith become effectual by acknowledging or speaking every good thing that's yours in Christ. It's important that we have active faith. How? Acknowledge what he says to you. Acknowledge what he says about you. It's time that we start speaking what he, spe- he speaks to our heart. He speaks to our spirit. So you know, you can, right now, if there's something that popped into you concerning whatever. Some of you all need to, some of you need to start tithing. This is not, that's not this is what the, again, coming under, you, you need to come under what the Lord, and you just check with the Lord. And if that bears witness with your heart, then you just got to, you got an opportunity to yield. You know, you could, you can't just bring an offering any way you want and have it be accepted by God. Matter of fact, if you're going to do it the way you want, when you want, how you want, you might as well keep that in your pocket. Because the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver whose heart is in his giving, not his obligation. And I'm telling you, this, is, this matters. It matters to God how we, bring, how we bring our gift. It matters. And there's conversations that need to be had between husbands and wives. And, and I'm telling you. And even as young, young men and women, as you're, if you're courting and you're dating, it, you ought to establish now who's the Lord of your, of your life and the Lord of your home and what master you're going to serve. And this right here, this is an offering message. And, and you know what? Sometimes there's got to be just faith coming. And so you want to see victory in finances? Speak faith to your finances, to, to, your, to mammon. Speak faith to it and watch it move. So we're going to acknowledge the, the, our, our heart this morning. I'm going to pray, and I'm going to speak, but I want you to speak. Whatever, it, you know, it doesn't have to be articulated with some great whatever. Just say, just speak what you get in your heart. Just be you, right? Father, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. We thank you that you are, G. we just declare Jesus is Lord, and we say we serve you, Lord. We come underneath your lordship. We come under your lordship, and we serve you, and we love you. We tell you we love you, and, and we, will, we will not serve mammon. Mammon will serve us. And so we just tell you mammon. We tell you money to multiply. We tell we're, we're places where we've been robbed. We, we, we thank you, Father, for payback in the name of Jesus. We thank you for favor. We speak for favor over, uh, over building situations. We speak for favor on jobs. Father, we just thank you even to let go, to let loose money that is rightfully yours. You've been faithful and you've worked. Father, I thank you for the promotions that are to come. I thank you for the open door. I thank you for favor. That which changes rules and favor is not fair. We thank you for favor in those situations right now that you would just uh, 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 turn on, on someone's decision because you moved on their heart. Father, we thank you for that. We thank you that we have more than enough to give unto every good work for your glory. Lord, we just lift our hands to you this morning and, and we just say these are for you. These hands are for you. Everything we put our hands to, it's for you. And so we establish our why. It's for your glory. I, we work for your glory. Why? It's for your glory, not, for, not, not, not just so we could be sustained. It's for your glory. We honor you this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. You can go ahead and give this morning. Thank you, Lord. Grab a chair. the seven names of God slide. I don't know if you have it from last week or if it's still there. I want to share something. Sometimes it's it's good to share some cool conversations. You know, um, last week we actually talked about Jehovah Shema. 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 I don't know. I like saying that. Some of these names are fun to say. Anyway. All right, um, but anyway, the, the, it, uh, after, after service last week, um, actually, Daryl Brantz, he came up, he's like, oh, you know, it's so cool, I want to share something with you that was so cool, what I saw as this slide was up there during communion, we had this slide, 
of who God is, and we see that all of these names, the names of God, how he, the redemptive names of God, the way that he revealed himself, this is in order in the Bible, and uh, Jehovah Jireh, the first one, Genesis, and then Exodus, Rapha, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, Shalom, Ra, Sitkanu, and Shama, and, um, and, and he said, as I was sitting there, I just saw that how cool God is, how he is Jehovah Shama, the Lord is there. He said he had to put it in that order because the Lord provides. He wants you to know he provides for your healing. He provides for your victory. He provides for your peace. He provides for your direction and, 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 and protection. He provides for your righteousness. You know why? Because he's there. Like, God provides because he's there. So all of these things that he's given to us. And so then here's the scripture that is so cool when God shows you something and it's what the scripture says. That he has given to us his exceeding and great and precious promises so that we would have everything that we need for our life in him and our life now. He's given us these promises. So everything. So he provides. Why? Because he's there. It's so cool. So I thought that would be cool to start out with this morning. And this morning we're actually going to, uh, I had jumped to Shama last week. I was uh, maybe going to be in Minnesota this week for uh, Pastor Mac, his birthday. Uh, my pastor growing up, he turned 80. Uh, it didn't work out. So we are here and I wanted to wrap up the uh, sick canoe. So um, ready? Are you ready? This morning I believe you're going to be blessed by the word the way I was blessed by the word as I studied for this, this week, and, 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 and you have, I, I have a running log of notes in my phone uh, whenever I teach on a ser- in series, just that it's going off, and I'll just throw it there when I'm running, when I'm, you know, just on, on, on a whim, or just like the Lord's dropped something into me, and, um, and just so I have some of that. So it was cool to be able to backlog and kind of go back and listen places that the Lord had already been, and how it just built on some things today. So let's go here this morning. We're going to jump in. Jehovah sit canoe. Somebody say sit canoe. Jehovah sit in my canoe. Anyway, I don't know. That's my joke. I didn't have a joke this morning. If you want to give me a good joke for uh, coming up, uh, it's nschlegel at beyondchurch.org. Again, nschlegel at beyondchurch.org. So I actually, um, somebody, I don't know how it happened, but in my prayer room uh, at home uh, on my little ottoman there, uh, there is the, a book of the worst dad jokes. So I, I don't need the worst dad jokes. I need the best dad jokes. So I don't know. Some, so I don't know who gave that to me or where that came from. And I started thumbing through it. It was uh, there was one for Christmas. We'll we'll save for then. All right, all right. But it's just you know it's like Christmas. It's not July, so you will have to wait till December. All right. Okay. <laughs> Aren't you glad to hear the word this morning? Yes. <clears throat> Jehovah said, "Can you, the Lord of righteousness?" This is where it says in Jeremiah. We're going to go to Jeremiah twenty three five through six. First, it says, the days are coming, declares the Lord. So I love this, that all of the, the, the books of the Old Testament, not all of them, many of the books are, are, are prophets, where they are speaking the word of God to the children of Israel, but they're not just speaking the word of God just to a people. How many of you know when the word of God is released, he said, so shall my word go forth out of my mouth, and it will accomplish that which it's set forth to do. So he was declaring some things in advance so that it could happen. He was declaring some things in advance so it would happen. Hey, give me your phone real quick, See a picture that you showed me. This is, this is so cool. We, we're, we're packing up. We're going to be moving um, uh, to a rental and then into our, 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 our next place uh, over the next six months. And, and so uh, last night or the day, day before, yesterday, all day, uh, Evan was packing and we were out at the shop, and she, I come back home, and she has this, these two notebooks, uh, and she's like, hey, I got something special to show you, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. She's like, you want to see something really cool? And I'm thinking, yeah, did you find, like, millions of dollars or something? Because <laughs> last time we moved, we found a big pa- thing of cash in a drawer somewhere. I was like, hey, maybe that'll, ha-, you know, I'm thinking, what do you find? And she, she pulls out these notebooks from 2003 when we went to Bible school, and she said, when I opened it up, it opened up to the names of God. And, and this is 20, over 20 years ago, okay? Because it was the beginning of 2003 uh, when we were in Bible school. 
And I was like, oh, that's so cool. So I, I, I just, I read some of that, like, eight or 12 pages of my handwritten notes, right? And I was like, that's so cool. That's so cool. And she said, you know what's so crazy, though? I, when I, I found yours, I, it was with our, was it with our notes and journals and, like, our, all, some older stuff that we had uh, together in savings. We have all of our notes from high school. We used to actually write notes, not just text. So we have shoe boxes and it's just, we kept them, right? Kind of like with your wedding dress, it's just, you know, we started liking each other in sixth and seventh grade, never broke up, so it was out, I'm sure we had some spats, it's so funny, I'm sorry for, you didn't talk to me between class, I'm sorry, that was such a bad person, it's okay, I forgive you, okay, we'll talk to you between next class, okay. That's the kind of notes. I love you more, no, I love you more, no, I love you more. N plus E equals... Okay, you get the point. So this is the, the, the box, and she pulled out one of her journals, and I totally, I, it's so funny, I recognized this blue in blue striped journal that she had, you had for a very long time in our uh, dating days. And this was at camp in 1998, and I'm talking about declaring some things in advance so it could be, so it could happen. And uh Pastor Ron McKee, who was the pastor here, was doing our summer camp, okay? Uh, and at, at that summer camp, she, she writes this, what I'm about to read to you, but also I'm sitting over here on like this side, and Pastor Ron gets me up. He says, hey, come here. And I'm like, he said, I need you to come, and I need you to lay hands on me, uh, lay hands and minister to, to the kid with me because you're going to do this. Out of, you know, I don't know, 130 kids. And that was super cool. I watched a leg grow out. He said, put your hands on there. I'll lay my hands on top of yours. And this leg grew out. I'm like, that's cool. <laughs> to say the least, cool. And then, actually, this is so funny. When I did, that leg grew out past the other leg. And I thought, oh, Lord, you shouldn't have got me involved. <laughs> that's promise happened. And then... Uh, and we had hands on both of them, but this one was shorter, and it grew out, and it grew past, and I thought, what in the world? Uh, that was not good. I mean, good, but like, maybe there's too much power here. I don't know what's going on. Like, I overdid it, because I was praying really hard, you know? Um, but it was just the Lord. And, and then the other one grew out to match it. So super cool. So just, just cool, like how God works just 20, uh, 25 years ago, okay? Okay. Um, but that night, Evan wrote a summer camp, August 22nd, 1998. God just told me that I'm going to be a pastor's wife and I'm going to sing. Sometimes I get scared like I'm going to, that I'm not going to fulfill it. Sometimes I get scared like, am I going to fulfill it? God has just showed me some things that I need to do and how I need to stay consistent with the things of God. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to do it when he calls. So God helped me to stay consistent with you and keep the fire. Pray about this every day, she wrote on there, on the, underneath. And you know, um, there's are, there are times the Lord needs words released in your life way early so that he can work. The release of your will allows him to move with his will. And so this is what you, you really see in a lot of these Old Testament uh, books or the books of the prophets. There, there's the words of the Lord declared to the children of Israel, but they're not just to the, to the children of Israel. They're declared in the earth. Right. And this is how God still works in the earth, right. through his word. Yes. And so there's things that he's declared the end from the beginning. It's interesting. I, he doesn't just know I declare the end from the beginning. So that he can move and so that he can work. And so here we see in, in Jeremiah chapter 23 that he's declaring about something that's going to come about. And we'll go ahead and read it. It says, the days are coming, declares the Lord. This is starting in verse 5. When I will raise up uh, for David a righteous branch. Now David, talking about Israel. A king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In, in his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called. And he's talking about Jesus that's going to be raised up through David, through the branch of David. He's going to be raised up, and his name is going to be the Lord, our righteousness. 
Again, this it says NIV here, um, New King James. Any, it's actually the Lord our righteousness. If you look it up, Jehovah Sitkanu, it's not just righteous. The reason they put it here, righteous Savior, is because it's a name. It's not just, it, you can't actually look up, if you were to look up in the Strongs and you were to look up the Lord, it would be like El, Jehovah righteous, not righteous, not, like the Lord our righteousness is a name. It's not just a thing. And so that's who he's going to be called, declare, declared. So um, if, I thought uh, if you'll go ahead and stick with no NKJ or no NIV this morning and just go N- NKJV, that would be sweet, um, or ESV. That, uh, that way, um, we just for my rec- recollection and communication, it's just clear uh, that way. All right? So Jesus is who? The Lord, our righteousness. He said there's coming a time there's going to be a day that his name will be the Lord, our righteousness. It's not yet. It's not yet for the children of God because he hasn't come. The king has to come first for him to carry the name, and then you could call him the Lord, our righteousness, or you could say, Jesus, my righteousness. The Lord, my righteousness. This is who he will become and who he'll who will be. All right, so... Um, all of Christianity, this is really a story or or how uh, how sinful man uh, can have fellowship and be in right standing with God. It's interesting how here we are, so many people on a Sunday morning, not just here, but all over the world, people are, they understand that they have a need to commune with God. That's ultimately what, what Christianity or, or all this is about people, whether in some other religion or whatever, they understand that they need connection with their creator. And so they're, they're looking for a way to have that connection. So some religion is like, if you do enough good, you can, get, you can, you, you can at least not uh, have all of the punishment for all of your bad deeds. I'll do the good to where you can at least, you know, not... But the Christianity is about how God made a way for our, us to be together, right, um, and, and for a payment of sin to be made, okay? So <clears throat> let's keep going here. It says, um, I wanna, we're going to go to Cain and Abel. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, uh, 3 through 4, the New King James Version. Um, we see that this is the uh, passage uh, that maybe we don't refer to enough when we speak about uh, Cain and Abel in Genesis chapter 4. And it talks about how, how Abel, by faith, offered a sacrifice. It says, by faith, w- w- this start in verse 3, we understand, and on, on Wednesday we talked a little bit about this, how faith brings understanding. Okay? Faith brings understanding. What you believe in your heart actually brings understanding to your mind, though you can't articulate the house. Right? It says, by faith we understand the worlds, were, the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were made of things which are, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. In other words, what you and I see, God said, and it created what we see. We, really, we exercise that even this morning. And so it was by faith understanding comes. Okay? But then it goes to verse 4. It says now, and, and I love this because the, one of the, if you have in your Bible, you have little headings or little, you know, kind of outlining what's going on. It says, faith at the foundation of the world. It's, uh, in, the, in one of my margins in my Bible, this was talking about how there was faith all the way at the beginning. And it says now, because how many of you know, this is pretty early, right? Abraham, not Abraham, this is way before Abraham. This is Adam and Eve, and then they had some sons, right? Cain, Abel, and then Seth. But Cain and Abel are in the garden, and it says that Abel moves in faith. Now, according to Romans chapter 10, how does faith come? Romans 10, 17. Now, faith comes by what? So so the offering that Abel offered and the offering that Cain offered, there had to be a word from God on how to offer the on how to offer the sacrifice or how to bring an offering. Because if there's no word from God, then there's no faith. It's just like we were talking about this morning. You can't just do what you want, when you want, how you want. Don't believe God. If, 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 you're, if you're in my life or whatever I'm not willing to put under the lordship of Jesus Christ, he has no authority to move in. So finances, if my finances aren't under, he has no authority to move in that place, that way. 
And so here you see that there is a direction or a word of God to Cain and Abel on how to bring an offering. And it says, Now by faith Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness, witness testimony, somebody declared to him or over him, okay, what? That he was righteous. God testified, testifying of his gifts and through it, he being dead still speaks. From the very beginning, why couldn't God just let this slide? Why couldn't God just allow this to be? Well, let's look here real quick. Let's go to Genesis 4. So we see it was by faith that, 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 uh, that Abel offered a sacrifice. And this is the way that and he was made righteous by faith. Because faith acts. Faith speaks. Faith carries with it a direction for your and my life. When you are in, and me are in faith, uh, there's going to be an activity. You know, faith might tell you to wait. How many of you know sometimes waiting is a serious activity? <laughs> and you're like, I'm doing nothing. Why is this so hard? Faith always carries with it corresponding action. Without, the Bible says that without corresponding action, faith is dead. And so here we see Abel, um, it says, Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock uh, and of their fat, and the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he didn't respect Cain's. But he did not respect Cain's and his offering. Well, is, that, is it God's bad? No, it's Cain's bad, okay? And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. Now, here's, let's just back up for a second. How do... It says that he accepted them. Did God say, I accept yours and I don't accept yours? I, I, he could have said that. He could have also done like a lot of the offerings back in the day where fire came down, you know, and whoosh, licked up the offering of, of Abel. And Cain's like, mine's still on the platter. And he's upset. It was really obvious that God said, I'll take yours, but I'll reject yours. I, I accept and I declare Abel righteous, but I don't say have any words to you other than that's, not, that's no good. That won't work. Let's keep going here. And, 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 uh, and the Lord respected Abel. Uh, keep going all the way to, I think we were at six. Uh, his countenance fell. So, so the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Like, why, why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? Isn't that funny how God was like trying to find an answer he might have already known? Anyway, um, anyway, he said, if you do well, or if you do, what's to do well? It's interesting, to, to do well just means that God is the standard. It's his way. It's his right, okay? Righteousness is his way of being right. This is what righteousness is, his way of being right. Okay, so if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not well, sin lies at the door, and his desire uh, is for you, but you should rule over it. You should rule over it. Okay, we're going to just stop here, all right? And, and then it goes on to talk about how um, Cain, he is still, uh, you know, filled with wrath, and he goes and kills Abel in the garden, and the, you know, God comes looking, hey, where's your brother? Am I your... Your brother Abel, Cain's like, am I my brother's keeper? You know, God's a little attitude, and the Lord says, because of what you did, you're now going to be cursed. No longer will the ground give forth its fruit. You'll be basically a nomad, okay? Um, but you see this, this, this passage that the principle ultimately is this, that you and I cannot be made righteous by what we produce, this is what this is all about. This is from the very beginning. He, God was unwilling to accept Cain's offering or his works. Well, how do we know it was his works? Because Genesis chapter 3, when, when Adam and Eve ate off the tree, he said, now cursed will be the ground. And no longer did the ground just give up its fruit, but now it says you will have to work for it, Adam. Remember the curse was given to, to Adam and to Eve. Eve in her womb, the childbearing would no longer just be fulfillment. It would come, what is, is your fulfillment and what you were created for will now be filled with pain. Okay, And then he says, now you, 
uh, Adam, where, where you work and what you're doing, what you were once tending with the words of your mouth and what you were doing this way. He said, now the ground, is, it's not going to give up its fruit. You're going to have to toil to bring it about. So we see that Cain was working really hard to produce something good and honoring to the Lord. I don't think he brought half-sized fruits. I think he brought his best. I don't think he, and it might have been in the process of time because when you, you know, sometimes that first squash that comes off the plant has that little black end on the end, but you still can cut that off and use that. You can't bring that one to God, right? You're going to bring your best, right? And you know, our righteousness is, as the Bible tells us, is like filthy rags. But he, he, it says in the process of time, as he got all of his things to the perfect rightness, I'm going to come to God when I'm cleaned up. Young people, I'm going to come to God when I'm married and have a kid on the way. Then I'm going to decide I'm going to come to God. And that's how I'm going to come to God, the way I want. And God's like, that won't work. You can't come to God the way you want, the way I want. There's only one way, and this is why Abel, it was so clear, and he set this precedent where sin fell. He showed how righteousness would come, and it would not come by your works. It would come by a substitute. This is how it came. It came by a substitute. Someone else, a lamb, a lamb, behold the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. A lamb was placed in the garden before the Lord, and he, the Lord said, by faith you offered, according to coming under, a substitute would be placed before, before, on my behalf. Okay? So, we are not made righteous by our works. The precedent was set right there, the law first mentioned in the Bible, Genesis, Cain, and Abel. I'm, I can't be made righteous. How many of you know that there was probably some pretty good fruit still in that garden? You know, it took like how many years for people to die still? I mean, the, the seeds of the garden were, it was, it was, there was some fruit and some stuff, right? Thank you, Lord. So 2 Corinthians 5.21, it says, He has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So we're made the righteousness or we're, we emerge righteous. If you're born again, you don't, you don't become righteous by your works. You're made righteous by his works. And so this is what's important. Uh, well, we'll just keep, let's just go through this a little bit here. Um, let's go to uh, Romans chapter 4, verse 16. Romans 4, uh, verse 16. Let's see where we're at here. Uh, let's see. Mm. Yeah, let's go. Th- uh, let's. Uh, um, I, I I I threw something out, and I, did, I wanted to build a case, so I'm like. Let, let's go to Romans 4, 4. Uh, yeah, let's go to Romans 4, 4 through 6, and then we'll go to 16. <clears throat> so, it says this. Now, to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but debt. So, in other words, if you work for me, I can't tell you, oh, I'm going to give you $100 for your work. Because you earned that $100. Is that right? This is what he's saying. Uh, but to him who does not work, in other words, who's not, it's not the, their toil, but it's, it's simply doing what God says, who believes. Isn't that what he says? That you and I are to believe? This is, what's, this is how you and I are saved. It, it's not by our works, lest we should boast, but it is by grace through faith. Through believing. So you're in my part to receive what God said is belief. This is your work, to believe. To believe what he said. To come under his word more than my self-assessment of a situation. Can I come under his word for, my, for all areas of my life? What does his word say? 
Okay? It says, but to him who does not work but believes on him who, ju- who justifies the ungodly, his face is accounted to him for righteousness. There's a gift. Next verse. Just as David also describes the blessedness of the man whom God imputes or gives or credits righteousness apart from works. He's saying this man is so blessed uh, whom God credits as being righteous uh, for no works aside. Works aside. Your and my righteousness is not a part of my, your and my works. Amen. Thank you, Lord. If you are righteous, it's because of what Jesus has done. End. End of this. That's it. That's where it settles. Okay? Let's go to verse 16. It says, therefore, the promise comes. How does the promise come? The promise of righteousness? The prom- By faith, that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed. Talking about Abraham's seed. Not only to those, uh, not only to those who are of the law. He's saying that Jesus came, and he came, and he talks about how we have a father of Abraham. And so that it wouldn't only be to the children of Israel, but it would be to anyone who comes by faith. Okay? Anyone who comes by faith, that you, you can get in on this. Not only those who are of the law, but also those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Go to the last two, uh, 23 and through 25. So we see this, that, that you and I, we can't earn our righteousness, but it's a gift. If we earned it, it wouldn't be a gift. And then it wouldn't be by faith. It'd be by works. And then we could boast. Okay, the Bible says, you know, you've, you, it's not by works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians, all right? He says, now it, was not, now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. In other words, it was given to him. It was credited to him. But also for us, it shall be imputed. And so this impute, imputed, what does imputed mean? This I- imputation, okay? Uh, to, to, in other words, what one person did, it can be imputed to you, to, to you now because of what he did if you're, gonna, you're willing to receive that, Okay? He says, but also for us, it shall be imputed to us who believe in him, who raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. Next verse. Who was delivered up because of our offense and was raised because of our justification. So we, 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 he, was, uh, we were, he was raised for us. There was a gift that was given in Jesus for you and me. But for you and me to receive it, it's not works, it's faith. It's not just for the children of Israel. It's for anyone who would come by faith. Okay, this is how, this is how righteousness comes. Now, kind of laying that foundation here, uh, and, and we're going we're gonna to go to Romans chapter 10, 1 through 4. Romans, I'll tell you, Romans is so, such a powerful, powerful book, and, and especially, I believe, for this day and age. Especially for this day and age. Young people uh, uh, who are very much mind driven you know if you were to go to the Colosseum, where's that found rome okay so uh, rome Colosseum, amazing feats of architecture incredible amounts of knowledge knowledge it's where they the, all these temples all the knowledge of architecture and philosophy and all this stuff was in that place and paul comes and he speaks to the roman church, but not just to the Roman church. This is a letter to the church at Rome, but the church at Rome was filled with new converts, but many had a lot to learn because of all the knowledge that they had. And in this day and age, as knowledge, as knowledge increases, it's important for us to know the standard of what God says, even compared to everything else. And so this is a message that is really well explained about how righteousness comes, how faith comes, about, uh, about what God says on lots of matters, okay? So uh, Romans 1 through Romans 10, powerful, all of Romans, but powerful when it comes to how righteousness comes, how you're saved, what does God say on any really most matters that we're dealing with today, okay? He says, my uh, brother, my heart's desire and prayer to God uh, for Israel is that um, they may be saved. So he's saying, I'm praying, I pray that Israel would be saved. Paul, who was a Jew, who was the Jew of of Jews, who was the most self-righteous Jew if he wanted to be, he said, I'm praying that they would be saved, okay? Uh, For I bear uh, them witness that they have zeal for God. Like, 
They, 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 they pray. They do this. They wash their hands. They do everything right. I mean, they keep the holy days. They don't eat on the Sabbath. They don't do anything wrong. I mean, they're to the, they, they, there's all these laws. They know the laws. They've memorized them. They know more than the Ten Commandments. They know the entire... They know. When they get up, when they sit down, they got it strapped to their forehead. They got it strapped to the door. They go to the temple to pray every, every time. They don't go to somewhere else. Uh, they don't go out for a ball game on the Sabbath. They go to the church. They do everything right. Is what I'm trying to say here. Amen. They have zeal for God. But not according to knowledge. In other words, not according to what God says. There, there's a way that God says, and that's the way you and I have to come. We can't come on our own fruits. We have to come the way he says. This is what we saw with Cain and Abel. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted to the righteousness of God. So they're trying to get the righteousness their own way. You know, it's not just the Jews that this have a problem with this. You know, oftentimes the church has a problem with this, where we try to get our own righteousness. And we try to work for righteousness instead of receiving righteousness. And see, if, 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 if there's a total different posture. If you and I work really hard to make that $10,000 check. But if I was to just come down there and write a check for $10,000 and hand it to you, then what? Really? Like all of a sudden I get a hug. You, you earn your 10000 I don't get a hug. You probably hug yourself. Like, yeah, look at, yeah. <laughs> but if somebody gives you that gift, it's like, now, you, now you, your heart is, there's a posture that just somehow, because of, well, his love for you, there's this love that is returned. And so many times we're trying to love God. For, and try to produce self-righteousness instead of realizing that God made me. When I was born again, I, I came out or I emerged righteous. Whether I've messed up or not, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. My righteousness was never based upon my works. It can't be. It is by grace through faith to believe on Christ. Now, keep on. it says, for Christ is the end of the law of righteousness to everyone who believes. Now, this is so good. This is uh, for you and me to, to, to get this. For some reason, we think, um, okay, let's go to Ephesians chapter 1, 4 through 6. I, I'm building this, but for some reason, we think that the work of the Holy Spirit is what's to make us righteous. The work of the Holy Spirit, you know, the fruits of the Spirit, like, like in other words, that the, the helper, the Holy Spirit, his job is not to make you and me righteous. But yet he is the empowerment to live unto God. Absolutely. But to, to, we, we, can't, we have to realize that Jesus finished the work uh, to make righteous. And, and how did he do that? He paid the price for all man when he, but not only paying the price, this is what's important. This is what I wanted to get to really today, uh, talking to. Let's read this first. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. He chose us. He wanted to make us holy. So in other words, before the beginning of the world, he said, I got to make a way. I got to make a way. How am I going to make a way? Well, he instituted a law that even many of, many of our laws uh, will still acknowledge, and that's the law of imputation. So by one man's sin, death entered. Have you ever read this in Romans? By one man's sin, death entered. And so all of mankind became sinful. And maybe you and I would say, yeah, that's kind of stupid because of one man, right? You ever, you ever kind of think that? Like, we were going to go, this happened in school a lot of times, right? We were going to go out for recess, but because you talked, you're in recess, everybody's staying inside. Oh, teacher, that's not fair. That's not fair. Right? You, you've been there? God knew in advance how to make something work, and by one man's sin, Adam, death reigned. You and I are not judged like the angels are judged. You know how the angels are judged? On their own. 
and on their own. That's how, all they, they were judged on their own, their own works, their own work. You know how man's judged? The works of another man. So before you and I get all upset about sin entering and I'm a sinner, I didn't do anything to be a sinner, you know, this is the, this is the attitude oftentimes in the world. Why do you say I'm a sinner? I'm not, I, like, I need a Savior. No, thank God that my trust, because of one man's sin, death entered, and there, so too, by one man, Jesus Christ, I could be judged by one man. And on his works. So I was judged on Adam's works. So all of mankind is judged on Adam's works as sin, sinful. Fallen short of the glory of God. In need of a savior. But also through one man, Jesus. Because I was judged by one man. And this was like the law. Uh, uh, the, the precedent was set by one man. The law of imputation. By one man, I could send a savior. I could have all rescue all of mankind. If they would what? Just simply believe on him. Whoo, that's good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So um, it says, for he chose us from the beginning of the foundation of the world to be holy, blameless in his presence. In love, verse 5, he predestined us for adoption as his sons through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the beloved one. He gave it to us how? In Christ. How are you made righteousness? In the beloved one. It's nothing, no other works apart from Christ. This is huge. Because what happens is when we recognize the size of the gift, I mean, had, this, this is a big gift. This is an important thing that you and I would be in the right place uh, and be re reconciled back to God. It, it must me make, make a big difference if you and I recognize where, or I'm going to back up here. My brain, I was trying to go way ahead here. It must be pretty important where you and I stand and that Jesus came not just to pay a price, but to be made righteous. Here's what I wanted to, to, to get to. We celebrate the blood of Jesus a lot. How many of you would say that is true? What do we talk about? What is, Jens, what does the blood of Jesus do? Huh? Yep. Yeah. Makes you whole. Forget what, what. What is the blood? What has? Okay, nothing but the blood of Jesus. So we sing about the blood. We thank for the blood. It covers our sins. It washes our sins. We would say we say covers because of what we see in in the Passover. We we recognize that Jesus removed our sins. He, as far as the east is from the west, though they were like crimson, they're now white as snow. So we sing about the blood. Um, but can I tell you, the blood is not your righteous. Just what makes you righteous. It was what forgave you, but what made you righteous is Jesus' works. That's what made you righteous. He, he wasn't just a payment for your sins. You and I get to put on the robe of righteousness. See, this is the law of imputation. This is, the, this is where, for me, this was so, so stinking. There was so much revelation in this when you see that, that Christ. By one man's sin, death entered. By one man's sin. His actions brought, brought well, guess what? Jesus' actions. So you get to put on, and he's going to become our righteousness. That I put on, we get to put on a robe of his works. Amen. So this is amazing. When you and I are born again, you, what happens is, is a robe of righteousness gets placed on you. You come out with the wings, or you come out with this robe of righteousness. This is, that's what you and I are measured and, 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 and judged by, the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So if you come, you come boldly to the throne of grace to get what you need. You are in him. You're a son. You're a child of God. You, you're wearing the robe of his righteousness, and your sins have been washed away. So not only is your sins washed, but you're, you're wearing a different robe. I, I, my, 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 my clothes are not my own. My clothes are not natural clothes, they're heavenly clothes. And I was born again, I was made new, and it wasn't this outward flesh that was made new, but it was my spirit that was made new or emerged righteous. It's important for us to understand this, that I was made righteous. As I put up, we're going to put some scripture to this so you and I can see this, but it is so sometimes hard for us to believe what God says. Even, the, even his disciples struggled to believe. 
Let's look, let's look at this, and, and then we'll get to the robe part here in a moment. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Um, so let's, uh, let's, look, let's just look at the... You, how many of you remember after Jesus died on the cross? He had been with his disciples and been with them, and they were, they were excited for Jesus and all that he was going to do. And now Jesus was crucified, and, and now he's rose and fr- risen from the dead. But it's in this in-between time when the disciples are depressed because what they had hoped was now a loss. I'm going fishing. I'm doing this. I'm, uh, and the ladies run to the tomb. And this is all the stuff that's going on. And there's a couple of disciples that are like, let's go down to Emmaus. Let's go down to this town. We're going to go over to Van Buren and we'll maybe get like this tropical smoothie or something like that. Right? Like some, like I just, let's just go, let's go to, let's go, let's go hunting in Oklahoma and we'll just take our mind off the matter. And this is what's going on. And all of a sudden Jesus shows up on the road. Isn't that cool? You know, he'll show up on the, on your road, even when, even when you're struggling to believe. And he says this, uh, He's like, hey, what's going on? Why is your guys' uh, face like so sad? This is, this is Luke chapter 24, uh, really starting in verse 13, but I'm jumping to verse 21 this morning. He said, uh, the disciple, he, Jesus is like, hey, why are you guys so sad? And he's, well, did you not hear? Did you not know what's going on? Did you not hear about the, the, the prophet Naz- of Jesus of Nazareth and how da 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 We had hoped, oh, sorry. Hit there, Luke 24, Luke 24, 21. We had hoped, but we had hoped, is what they said to him, uh, that he was the one who would would redeem Israel. So they they don't believe that Jesus redeemed Israel at this point. They don't believe that Jesus was the redeemer. They they don't. They're sad. They don't, they didn't, even Peter, Peter recognized you're the Christ, the son of the God. He's the one that said that. None of the other ones said that. So it's here. They're walking on the road to Emmaus, a couple of disciples, and they're sad because what they thought they believed and what they thought they held, it, 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 well, Jesus didn't do it. It wasn't him. But we hoped that it was he who was going to redeem Israel, to buy back. Okay. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day since this has happened. So they're on the way to the road. They're not at the tomb. They're like, the news hasn't hit us about his redemption or not redemption, but resurrection, right? And so they're on the road to, it's already the third day, nothing's happened, too late, right? Let's go. Let's go fishing, let's go hunting, let's go do this. And Jesus is right there, in the middle of all this. And and if you go to the next verse, verse 25, Luke 24, 25, he said to them, how foolish you are. How foolish you are, and how slow to believe all the prophets that the prophets had spoken. And so that what happens is he says, did, he says, verse 26, Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in the scriptures concerning himself. So he goes back. He goes, hey, y'all are so slow to believe. Do you, let me, here, let's look all the way back. Let's look at this. And let's look at this. And so he begins to talk with them. And they're walking. And, 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 and that he would be beaten for our transgression. He would, like, he's going through the prophets. And the, I, like, he's going back. And they're like, wow. Yeah. Whoa. And then he's like, uh, we're going to stay here. You want to come in for dinner? Right? And they're like, yeah. yeah. Jesus is like, I, I, well, I could go on further, but I'll, I'll come in if you want. And so, yeah, yeah, sit down, sit down. And so when he took bread, he broke it. And their eyes were opened, and he disappeared. Okay? And they said, did not our hearts burn within us? Did not our hearts burn within us? But all the way to the end of Luke 24, verse 34, here's what they say. They say, it is true. The Lord has risen. It is true. You know what they said? I believe he's redeemed Israel. I believe he paid the price. I believe it. I, be- I believe it. I I saw it with my own eyes. It's him. It's him. I, but I didn't see with these eyes. They saw with when he broke the bread, they, they recognized not just him as Jesus, as the person Jesus, but they saw the fulfilling of all the things, all of what he said would happen. And they go, it's true. 
It was him. He's the redeemer of all. Adam, who sin fell, he's the redeemer of all. Righteousness by him alone, our works. This is the good news of the gospel. This is where I'm free. I was bound. I'm free. Do you understand? This is why the testimony was so powerful and so righteous and so hated among the Jews. Any place that you preach the righteousness of God apart from works, those who want to display their righteousness through their works will hate you. And this gets into the church. It's not only the Jewish people that want to say, I'm righteous because of my works. It's the church oftentimes that wants to say, I'm righteousness. I'm righteous because of my works. Righteousness Righteous works do not come from the outside. They come from the inside out. And so I have to identify first where my righteousness comes from. I was not, I don't become righteous. I emerge righteous. When I'm born again, I'm, I emerge righteous. I never, when you're born again, never will there be a time when you're more righteous from the time you're born again. That, that your righteous is not anything based on your works. It's only on Jesus. Only on Jesus. The Lord our righteousness. And we see this, 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 this picture in, in Luke chapter 15 with the prodigal son when he puts on this robe. Romans chapter 3, 19 through 20 talks about, at the very end, it talks about the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. How does righteousness come? How does righteousness come? The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. Righteousness comes to you and me. Is it by our works? Nope. How is it? By faith in Jesus Christ. That's how, how does it come? How does your righteousness come? Right standing with God to where you can come boldly to the throne. How does it come? By faith in Jesus. That's it. That's it. That's the goodness of God. Let me tell you, every person in here, if we could pull back the covers and see the thoughts that were in your mind about this or this or this, you would, we would all be strictly embarrassed of works and things we thought, said, did in our past. It's by no works, by no works, no person can be saved by their works. It's only through the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And if I would get that, if I received the $10,000 check, not as having earned it, if I receive a big, big, big expense, big expense, big prize. It's important that we understand that we're righteous. It's important that you and I understand that we're righteous. Because only in these redempt, being righteous do I have access to every one of these redemptive names. My healing is... Be, is be, sin has no right to bring death into my life because I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The wages of sin was death. Sickness and death came from what? Sin. But it has no right in my life. Because God is God just or is he not just? He is just. If he's just and by one man's sin death entered, then but how much more will the, those who are made righteous reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? You're my reigning and ruling over things. We have to understand first and foremost that we're righteous through Christ. And that every one of these names, my peace. Listen, the, was there peace in the Garden of Eden before the, there was peace? Guess what? There's peace today. And through Jesus. What, what, was, there, was there sickness? Nope. Was there healing? Yep. Guess what? There's healing today. Was there victory? Yes. How? The, the Lord, I'm telling you, this, was he a shepherd who walked with them in the cool of the day? Yes. Guess what? you got a shepherd today who's very present and help in time of need right now. Every one of these things, is, it has its foundation and its roots in, in the fact that I'm righteous in no other way but Christ Jesus. Every person here, you're, he says this, go into all the world and preach the gospel. The other night we had our, our coordinator meeting and sharing what's going to be coming up on vision night, which I didn't do any announcements. I'll do them at the end during offering. Squirrels, you know. What? I did offering, but I didn't do announcements. Now there's too many words. What were we talking about? 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, guys. We were talking about preaching the word. We're going to be on Vision Sunday. Uh, we're going to be doing a vision series co- coming up on October the 8th, okay? Uh, and, and 8th and uh, 15th and I think 23rd is what it is. But we're talking on the vision of the church. The vision of the church that's not just to sit out here, but we're equipped to go out there. But who? Well, only if you're righteous. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You. To do what? Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Lay hands on the sick. Like what, what it says, it tells us, see the good news, we, we were reading this in the same book that Pastor Evan read this morning in Team Huddle. Uh, the good news is only good news if it gets there in time. And did you know there's people dying and going to hell because their faith is not resting upon the works of one man, Jesus? It's resting upon themselves. And they can't come to God. It matters that we have and hold this foundation that in Christ alone, is which I stand, the solid rock. Right, my righteousness in Christ alone. In Christ alone. Luke chapter 15, 22. This is a, a beautiful, and then we're going to go to the Revelation scripture. This is a beautiful uh, picture of who God is. Standing on the hill, and this is the story of the wayward son, or you've heard it said it this way, the prodigal son. The prodigal son who was going to go make it his own way. Give me my inheritance. Give me what I need. Give me the strength, which is finance, the finances, and I'll go make it happen for myself. But a famine arose. In other words, hardship arose, and there, there he wasted all that he had had. And he came to himself, and he went back to his father's house. And his father was standing on the hill, the same way that we see in Revelation, that he's standing at the door of hearts and knocking. Oh, he never, he never leaves. He never forsakes us. He never, no, none of the world. He never. He's always there. It's never too late. No one's ever, ever too far gone to come to Christ. Amen. If, they, if they'll come to themselves, say, I need to go back to where my father's house is. I need to go back to where that knock. I need to answer the, the door. I got I to gotta answer the knock. And you'll find that he's right on the other side just waiting for you. And not just waiting for you, but waiting for you with something of a robe and a ring of, and, and a celebration. I, I have a testimony uh, just a couple weeks ago uh, of, of a gentleman. Here it was on a Wednesday night we were, or a Sunday night when Chip Brim was here in the back, and he was talking about uh, coming back to Christ. And he said, I was on my back porch, and I finally made the decision to give my life back to the Lord. And did you know I didn't get hit with a stick? Did you know I thought I, was, I, I, was, I, I, thought I would have heard it's about time? Did you know I would have thought it's like, finally? He said, I didn't hear any of that. What happened was uh, there was just a warmth and a love like I've never experienced before. Just grabbed me and held me but, He was waiting there with the get, the, get the ring, get the ring of authority, get the robe, get the, not the, just the robe, no, not just a robe, get the best robe. Get, the Father said, bring out the, get the best one, get the best one, not one, get the very best one, the, 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 the best money could buy, put it on him. He, he was, you got to understand, he was still filthy. He just came from the pig pen. He, he didn't get inside and said, let me shower first. He, they he put it on him. And the robe is what covered his sin. The robe of righteousness is what covered him. Now let's go to Revelation. and We'll, we'll close with this, this verse, 19, 6 through 8. This is the marriage supper of the Lamb. The marriage supper of the Lamb, when we're, we're, we're in heaven, we will celebrate with, with, as the bride of Christ with our groom, celebrating just union with him. Wow. And I, and, I, as, and I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude and the sound of many waters and, and as the sound of mighty thundering saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God, omnipotent, all-powerful reigns. So a great multitude. Let us be glad and, and rejoice and give Him glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come and His wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. It was given to her to be made pure and perfect and holy. 
and, and the righteous acts are that of the saints. You're saying, oh, I thought it was of Jesus. I'm saying, if you're not getting this, the righteous acts are those of the saints. It was imputed to you and me. Christ works. Christ's righteousness, it's mine. That's mine. Christ's righteousness is my righteousness. And Christ alone is which I say. The, the, why it was given to me, it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright. Fine. Why? Because of my works. What were my works? His works. My works were his works. I, my robe, my righteousness is its filthy rags, which is, that, that, that analogy there is like that of uh, menstrual cycle rags. That just filthy rags, a, a dish rag. And, and that's my righteousness that I would wear, holes in it. Just, but the righteousness that comes from Christ, his robe that he puts on me. That we get to stand in, and it was granted to them. It was granted. Hmm. Here. It was, let me say it this way. It was given to them. It wasn't by works. It was given to them to wear this robe, a robe that they didn't produce, a robe that they didn't, it, it was by Jesus Christ alone. So as much as we celebrate the, the, the shed blood of Jesus, can we celebrate the life of Jesus the life of Jesus for that he walked in all his life. He didn't just lay his life down on the cross. He laid his life down the entire time. I remember, um, God, this is a hard one. Sometimes to receive and talk about getting in the church. You remember when Jesus was baptized? by John the Baptist he came out and John the Baptist said look behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world whose sandals I'm unworthy to even lose and Jesus said would you baptize me would you and so he gets into the river with, with John the Baptist and John baptizes him and as he baptizes him the Holy Spirit descends upon him, but there's a de declaration made about him. And I don't know if it's like this with you, but maybe sometimes in your life, maybe growing up, you get rewarded for how good you do and how you perform. But it says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. It That's what he says about you. Not because of anything you did, but because of Jesus. He loved you so much that while I was in my state of sin, he sent Jesus. He loves me. He loves me. And if I would believe on him for my righteousness, I'd hear this all the time. I'm pleased with you. I'm telling you, there's something of living from that place instead of for that. It'll change your life. Knowing you're pleasing to your father. In today's day and age, there's uh, all kinds of things going on. People are looking for love. People are looking for acceptance. There's decisions made about sexuality. There's groups of friends that we choose. All because we're looking for acceptance. Love, we say it this way, to be celebrated. You're celebrated in Christ. Believe on him. Receive his celebration and dancing over you. And then be free to make the decisions from that gift. You don't.
constrain somebody or make somebody move into a place of righteous acts. It only comes from their heart, from knowing how much they're loved and how much their Heavenly Father loved, loves them. We love Him. How? Because He loved us. First, Jesus is, and we'll say this one day, today, the Lord, my righteousness. The robe that I stand in is not my works. It's His robe. Can I know that I know that this may be a maybe a stretch of an analogy, but I think of a son, and my sons are not as big as me yet. They think they're strong like is me, but not quite. So if they put on my shirt or my hunting jacket or my robe, there was a time, not so much anymore, that it swallowed them up. You know? My, I, my, I, we used to wear my dad's work shirts for our pajama shirts, you know, and they'd come to here when we were just little. And that's how I just saw the robe of God's righteousness for us. That we put it on and it just is hanging down like this, you know. It's just so big. It's so so covering. It's so wonderful. It's so comforting. It's so just as a child. And I just, that just was my prayer this morning. Amen. That we would see that. Amen. That that's the kind of robe that God wants to put on us. One that is just so encompassing, so big, and so much greater than our own works. If we'll receive that this morning, we'd have a message of good news. We'd be able to carry the message of good news that Jesus Christ came and paid the price for my sins and for your sins. That anyone who believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Is this the message? It's the message. It's the good news. It's how we're made righteous. Let's uh, bring forth communion, if we would, this morning. Thank you, Lord. You know, this is a time, receiving communion, the time that we not just celebrate the, the body and the blood, but we're celebrating what, what God did through His Son, Jesus. Go ahead and start passing that out. Thank you so much, guys. My son, uh, one of my sons, I'll let you guess which one said, oh, are we going to have a communion again? I hope so, because I really like those crackers. <laughs> Did you know he likes that you like the crackers? It's like, oh, I really like that grape juice. You know that he likes that you like that? But it's not about a grape juice or a cracker. We know that. It's about a covenant. Listen, he's not breaking. The agreement that he made in Jesus, he's not breaking. Where he said, listen, make the exchange of, of my righteousness for your filth, for your sins. Oh, he's not breaking that covenant. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mm, thank you, Lord. I, I know sometimes uh, maybe while we're, as we're passing this out, it's not the most orderly moment, but if you're here this morning and while we were talking uh, about righteousness and you know that you've been trusting in your own works for your righteousness... Now would be a great time to just say, I trust you with that, Lord. But if you're here this morning and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, and you know that Lord's at, he's knocking on the door of your heart and say, would you come to me? Would you just, right now, while we're still passing it out, would you come down here? I could pray with you, and then we could receive communion together up here. I would, that would be amazing. If, that, if that's you, I just want to open that up, and we'll pray a prayer of the prayer of salvation. Uh, before we receive communion. Thank you, Lord. And I'll, we'll wait. And communion's about five more rows. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. 
Lord, we thank you for your righteousness. We receive your righteousness. Thank you, Father. For a righteousness consciousness. There's young people that were doing things with their girlfriends recently. And God loves you. And he's not thinking about that. But where you, listen, this is important. Because shame can keep you, sin can keep you from the place where life flows. Here's the answer. When you, when you see that you've walked in a way contrary to him. The Bible says, confess your sin to him. Lord, I miss it. I need you. And he'll wash you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Your, your Your conscience is what gets cleansed. It's not your spirit. Can I tell you, your spirit is made righteousness by the by the work of Jesus. But what cleanses is cleansed when you repent is your conscience is your mind. When you were born again, your spirit was made new. Can I tell you, your conscience being cleansed is so vital because your conscience is what allows you to come and come to God and appropriate all the promises of salvation instead of being away and being chewed up and eaten and spitting out. Listen, when you mess up, if you, when you, when you see, when you've gossiped, when you, whatever it is, confess to him, Lord, Father, I just, I see where I mess, missed it. I, I, I just, I'm turned back to you in this. And he'll wash and cleanse you, cleanse you. Amen. Can we stand this morning? Thank you, Lord. <laughs> and so when we see the price of Jesus as we receive communion today, we see the price that he paid not only in his death, but in living his life. As we receive this this morning, I and we, we receive the body, not only that was beaten for us, but that for years was an endured life, perfect, holy, spotless. I just would ask you, the way he laid down his life, am I laying down mine? The way he lived for me, Today, would I, would, would I make a commitment to live for him? Just, just that, Lord, I want to live for you today, the way that you lived for me. So, Father, today we take your body in, in our hand. We take this bread that you broke, and you said, this is my body given for you. Lord, we say to you today, as we celebrate, we're, we, give, we offer you our bodies as living sacrifices, holy, set apart, the way that you say, We desire to honor you, to love you the way you loved us. Thank you for your body, your righteousness, and we receive your righteousness today, your righteous works as we partake of your body. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now we take a cup same way you did and you said this is a new agreement a new covenant that's written in my blood father we thank you for the agreement a covenant that we're yours we thank you for washing us and cleansing us from all unrighteousness and father we thank you not only just a washing uh, uh, of the inside but father we thank you that even of our conscience that we would become not sin conscience conscious but righteousness conscious that we are in you and so we celebrate that and we thank you for that we honor the covenant of the blood of your son Jesus we receive it thank you father and because of righteousness Lord we thank you that you are our healer you're our victory you're our peace all of these things all of the way you've revealed yourself to man is who you are because of Jesus to us. So we thank you for that. 
And I thank you that we would come boldly to your throne, wrapped in righteousness, to get whatever it is, anything that we need, grace and mercy to help in time of need. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name.